Good evening everybody, Count Biker here and I'm out on the animal. Not had this bike out in oh too long. Not had it out this month and we're nearly at the end of the month. Not had it out since I bought the CB500X and uh, although you might think that's because well it's taking the CB500X everywhere instead it's actually because the weather's been so blooming awful that this month's almost been a washout. I think they said the other week we had the hottest ever May or the hottest ever June or something on record. I'm waiting for them to say we've had the wettest ever July on record because it's just rained and rained and rained. And I shouldn't complain because at the same time half of Europe's on fire with a heat wave but we're on the wrong side of the jet stream or the right side if you don't want to be on fire. But that's meant that I've not really ridden much this month at all. Um, so it's been very, very frustrating. So this is the first time I've got out on this one. I've been out on the other one probably three or four times. And uh, well, nearly a month off this bike has, <laughs> has really made a difference. It feels really small. I was out on the Honda last night. Uh, with Graham moves up ahead of us on the uh, Africa Twin and um, we just went out for a cup of tea we, it said on the weather forecast that it was going to be dry until 10 o'clock in the evening so we said let's get out there and have a cup of so we headed off at about 6 o'clock and it rained by 7 <laughs> and it's just been uh, just been terrible I've been trying to sort the garage out and um, it involves getting lots of bits of MDF and various boards out that don't like getting wet and every time I've pulled them out of the garage so I can organise it it rained again and I've had to drag them back in again <laughs> really quick so I've not even actually got the garage sorted yet ready for two bikes even though I've had the uh, second bike for well, well over three weeks in fact it's Thursday now so it'll be four weeks in two days So yeah, a bit of a bit of a frustrating time. I have been putting up videos because I've had quite a few from when I took some time off earlier in the year when we did have a bit of a heat wave. So that's why there's been a probably more videos than normal despite me not riding. Uh, hopefully by now I'll have put up the video. I haven't actually done it in real life, but by the time you get to this one, I'll have put up the video about the Honda and naming it. Um, I haven't even put the videos of the day when I picked it up yet, that's how far behind I am. I haven't got a name for the bike yet, but hopefully I'll have one by the time this video comes out. And uh, yeah, I'll have to speed up my releases so that I can get to a name for it. I've got the animal, I don't know what the other one is. It might be the Honda Hypermiler, because I have noticed it sips fuel. This thing if you're really taking it easy and trying to trying to hypermile then you might get 40 to the gallon out of it might even get 45 if you're extra especially careful but that takes a lot of self-control on a bike like this the Honda the riding I've done alone I've been averaging nearly 90 to the gallon uh, and even when I had Mrs C on the back for a ride for uh, Peter's Wish, which hopefully I'll have made a video of as well. Um, even with that, I reset the counter beforehand to see what's it going to be like two up, because it's obviously going to, you know, I'm not saying Mrs. C is heavy by any means, but it's obviously going to use more fuel when there's two of you. Even then it's getting 78 to the gallon. So if nobody comes up with a good name, it might be the Honda Hypermiler. It's not much fun though, is it, as a name that one? It just crossed my mind that Graham's on a Honda, Af Honda Africa Twin, an AT, and it's got automatic transmission. So it's the AT AT. He should have named it Darth Vader. Anyway, we're just on a little ride. We're off to Widden Sea by the coast, Mrs. C's hometown. I stole her away from. It's Widden Sea bike night tonight, so we're going to go and see if we can see some bikes and hopefully not get wet this time and have a cup of tea look at the sea wistfully as you do 
<laughs> I haven't really got a topic for the video so it might not see the light of day but if I think of anything while I'm riding along I shall say it I had forgotten just how small this bike was and I also had just forgotten how um, how heavy the clutch is I might have to have a look at it see if it's too heavy it's, um, the Honda's is so light it's almost like you're not pulling on anything at all of course I've been on the Honda 500 with its 46 horsepower so I kind of forgotten that it could do that <laughs> Ah, this bike is so much fun. <laughs> I think I, uh, going back to having a CB 500X as well as this, as I did before the accident, I think it is, um, for me, it's almost a kind of motorbiking nirvana. Maybe that's overstated a bit, but it means I've got everything I need out of a bike, I think. I've got one that is quick and somewhat idiotic. Vroom. Somewhat digital on the throttle, <laughs> but entirely impractical. And one that's much more practical that Mrs. Seal go on. This is uh, Rise Hall there. Just mention though, that's a bit of a famous place that one. Probably won't have heard of it, but um, if you're in the UK and you used to watch Sarah Beanie on the telly, she was a property developer who went round, uh, I would say helping people do property development, but in reality it was kind of giving them good advice and watching them ignore it. Must be the most soul destroying job, but I guess it paid well because she ended up buying that place back there, Rise Hall, and doing that up. I'm not sure how successful it was, and I believe she doesn't own it anymore. Yeah, anyway, back to the two bikes, yeah. So you've got this basically insane bike for tomfoolery. Um, and then the Honda, which, say, Mrs. Seal go on, uh, said it was luxury the first time she went on the new one again. Not again, but you know, on the CB 500 X again, and on the new one for the first time. And uh, I'll also use it for distance stuff. I think I will still do some travelling on this bike for sure. I'm not going to turn it into a bike that is just for heading to bike nights on. But um, for those trips where I particularly want to take photography equipment with me, so either cameras or video cameras or the drone. Having the luggage on the Honda is superb. Hopefully I'll get good use out of both of them. I suppose with the colours and the friendliness of the Africa Twin, maybe R2-D2 would have been better, but you know, the Atats and R2-D2 were on opposite sides, weren't they? I went for seventh gear then. <laughs> That's one interesting thing about the Honda. I didn't think that the gear indicator would come in that useful, but the, um, the difference between the gears is so small that there have been a few times I've been in sixth gear on the Honda and I've thought about going for seventh, but a quick glance down and I've gone, ah, sixth gear already, not needed. Wonder if I should get a gear indicator for this. I'm not sure where it would go. I guess you could stick one on the side there or something, but it's not exactly uh, brimming with free space for things, is it? <laughs> An estate agent would call it bijou. This is old bro where Quite a while ago I came and showed the um, the dissolving cliffs. I've not been back in a while, I think I'll have to pay another visit. Record them and compare it to last time, see how much they've dissolved over the last 
number of years, however long ago it was, probably probably seven or eight years ago to be fair. Well we're here at Woodensea Seafront, a few bikes around. Quite a few indeed. Let's see if we can find a nice spot. Hello. Quite busy. <laughs> Quite noisy. <laughs> A few nice machines around tonight. Triumph <laughs> Well, I think I'll leave it there on the Triumph Babyville. What can you say? Thanks for watching, everyone. Ride safe. And I'll talk to you all again soon.